how can we trust each other? A question burdened with many conditions. It depends both on universal human biology and the peculiarities of individual existence. In other words, trust is something we need, but it is also what we make of it now and here. In the 20th century, the terms for trust in diplomacy and politics were changed. People found out that what they thought they could trust could not be trusted, and they were hurt by it. In order to regain trust today, we need change more than ever, because today we can't really trust the ones we empower to guard peace, pluralism and democracy. Take this man, for instance. He told us he was sure his enemy had weapons of mass destruction. This man backed him up, using fabricated evidence designed and compiled by the Secret Service. People trusted. But I'm just a good leader to my people, said the dictator. I'm practically unarmed. His people trusted. So what Bush and Blair needed to do was to invade Iraq, crush Saddam and find the weapons of doom. They found nothing. So what happened to trust? There was a moment in history when rules of political trust and diplomacy changed. The moment when the terms of peace became part of war. It happened in 1919, in Paris, when Lloyd George, Woodrow Wilson and Georges Clemenceau imposed on defeated Germany the Versailles Treaty. Peace came at certain price. Americans proposed a decent truce for Germans, but the Allies would have none of it. Germany was humiliated. At this turning point in the history, the distinction between the basis for peace and the aims of war was broken. While Germans starved, the Americans prospered. But even in New West during the 20s, while the rich made tax returns, the workers and farmers were in a dire situation. So were the veterans of the Great War, who were never paid their pensions. What happened to trust? It was lost during the economic crisis. It was raped when Hitler first burned books and then switched to burning people. It broke down somewhere between Pearl Harbor and Hiroshima. When the heat cooled down, we got the Cold War. Korea, Vietnam, Afghanistan. Russians lied to Russians, Americans lied to Americans. Yugoslav President Tito lied to both, but nobody believed him more than his own people. Presidents changed, but not the idea of trust. First war in Iraq was all about freedom, or perhaps oil. It depends on whom you trust. In Yugoslavia, Tito was no longer trusted. In fact, he was already dead, and so was the country. Milosevic lied to Serbians, Tuđman lied to Croats. They said their armies didn't enter Bosnia. At the end, everybody lied to everybody. What happened to trust? It got crushed long before the Twin Towers, and it certainly wasn't restored when we found out that Bush planned to invade Iraq before September 11th. Trust is a tricky thing. It is always a part of a system in movement. Scientifically speaking, it is an interdisciplinary phenomenon. And so is cybernetics, or the system science, which emerged after the World War II. During the 60s, its founder Gregory Bateson tried to answer the following question. Why do we need to change the terms for trust? Because in Versailles, war was merged with peace and lies blended with the truth. That was the answer. Bateson called it a deception. And here is what he said of trust among humans. If we trust and find that that which we have trusted was untrustworthy, or if we distrust and find that that which we distrusted was in fact trustworthy, we feel bad. And so from Versailles to Iraq, all conflicts break trust, and the only thing that can restore it is finding out what really happened to systems that managed to break it. Bateson realized we need to think about significance in history and of the events when attitudes are changed in terms of systems and not merely in terms of individual actions. System thinking is key to understand what happened to trust, but Bateson went further. He warned the results of cybernetics are now used to wage wars. For example, the State Departments of several nations are today using games theory, backed up by computers as a way of deciding international policy. That's why the rules need changing, both on the regional and global level. But what kind of change do we need? That's what we should think of during this workshop. 
It's all about how we will organize ourselves to let the knowledge emerge which we need so we will know how to act as a system. The workshop will conclude with five presidents sitting with us, prepared to hear what we have to say to them. Let's hope they will trust.